is the word gets out. Don't play with this. Your career is not worth it. Now, let's go back to ecclesiastical deed polls. I know there's been a lot of disinformation thrown about ecclesiastical deed polls. There is a refinement we have made based on this knowledge. And again, none of this knowledge would have come if those that have produced the executor and thrown out all this information had not ushered their attack. So I take the divine inference of this and thank what has happened. But I've made the distinction between rational debate and using scripture. But if you go and have a look at 133 Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, the major change is that at the bottom of Canon 1564, and you look at the description, you don't have to name the actual person that sent you the notice anymore. You just have to direct it to the executors and the administrators. And it's much stronger when it's in that position. So now we have, I believe, a much clearer understanding of exactly how they are playing their game when we go to court. Now, of course, we know about them leaving. We know that if they run out, they're about to change the form. If they use the word recess, they're actually asking us to acknowledge to change the form rather than adjournment. We're just going to call a brief recess. Uh, I object. Uh, is it not an adjournment? You say that, they realise that you understand they're about to change the form and they're stuck. The judge will sit back down. Don't accept a, a recess. You want to accept a new jurisdiction? Okay. Understand what's going on. UCC, Commercial Code, first form. Judge is sitting there as a landlord. They leave, they come back. The form is now Canon Law, Maritime Jurisdiction. And the judge is now the banker. And they're now the trustee of the second trust, the flesh. That's why they can send your flesh off to prison. They want to charge you with contempt. They have to call a recess or they have to run out of court. When they come back, the court is now canon law, commercial law, sorry, canon law, maritime law, in which case they are now the banker. And as the banker, they can now say, hey, your flesh is off to prison for six months. Now, if they're really game and they run off again, they'll come back as the priest. They're using the third Sesta KV where they're saying, I hold your soul, you're an animal, and uh, I've had enough of you, I'm just going to send off a sentence and put you to death. They don't do that now, but the power's there. The power is there for them to use that if that's what they want to do. Well, what's another insight about what we've said? Remember I said that, that estates have no personality. Only Sester KVs or the trust corpus have personality. But if we see the word estate or state, we're not talking now about Sester KVs. Uh, sorry, we're not talking about um, permanent testamentary trust. We're talking about Sester KVs. Wherever state or estate is used, it is a Sester KV trust. A trust created on the presumption of a decree, judgment, as opposed to by a conveyance of testators. Well, let's, let's think of one that is in front of us. Let's talk about the United East States. Well, the United East States has no, by their rules, as a name, has no legal personality. It's the things inside. It's a trust corpus that has personality. But if we see the word estate, are we talking now about a, a inter vivos, a, a living trust, an express trust? No, can't be. Okay. Are we talking about a permanent trust, a permanent testamentary trust? No, we're not. We're talking about a Sesta KV, a temporary testamentary trust that exists purely on presumption. Well, what is then the presumption that has created United East States and all these countries as Sesta KV? Because that's what they are. Every country is a Sesta KV. Well, very simple. A Sesta KV is created on the presumption of you being lost, abandoned, incompetent, or a minor. Well, what is a minor? Minor is a child. What does the Pope 
call himself the father, the pontiff, the father of all, representing the father of all. What are we then? We're the children, are we not? What do they call those that wrote the Constitution, the founding fathers? Do we consent to them being the fathers? Yes, we do. Who represents the fathers? Those that continue to uh, be elected through the, the deed and will of this Sesta KV. So the president is our father. What are we? Children. Okay, so the Sesta KV holds true. Even though, of course, we know that the original form was usurped. So the problems that we face, whether it be the court or whether it be the injustice of how nations run or whether it be the injustices of the world are all fixable in our hands. It has nothing to do with how many people we get to this knowledge to. Not at all. The one thing that challenges us and the one thing that is a condition is that we are competent in our knowledge and that there is a viable alternative to the existing problems. Well, revolutions are a romantic concept. I mean, it is. If you look at all the books and stories of the French Revolution or the Communist Revolutions or any kind of patriot movement is all wrapped in the flag, the last vestige of the scoundrel patriotism. It's all wrapped in the flag it's all there, it's fantastic. Let's write a document that's as good as the Declaration and, and go forth and reclaim our rights. Well, there's something deeper than that. Closing all these Sesta KVs, all these countries off, dissolving them and restoring law and order is not difficult once you can claim that the rights of the Roman cult are false. Well, that's what we're doing. We're doing that every day with one heaven in UK. That's exactly what we're doing the challenge is a competent replacement now that's where you get into trouble because if you sit down with people what they say is well what right do you have to talk about these kinds of laws let's start with a blank canvas let's get all the experts into a room and let's work out what the law should be well <clears throat> the problem is if you've ever seen <laughs> the end result of what happens when that happens is that it's a nightmare it's a disaster the reason education doesn't work is because the systems in education are deliberately corrupted because the people who determine the syllabus throw their agendas. The reason health doesn't work in the world isn't because the doctors are bad or the nurses are bad or that there isn't enough money. There's overflowing amounts of money. The problem is that money gets paid to pharmaceutical companies to produce synthetic painkillers where 100 years ago, 99.99% of painkillers were free. And the biggest thing that we all usually require on a regular basis isn't antibiotics, it's pain relief. So vast quantities of money is corrupted into that. Another one is this idea, let's close down our community hospital, let's build these massive monolithic hospitals which are badly run, they're all deliberately and badly run, incredibly inefficient, and yet some bureaucrat says that this is making economic sense because 10,000 beds in one place and abolishing all these other regional hospitals makes better economic sense. Madness. Absolute madness. That's why health doesn't work. So logic, rational, reasonable, sensible, planning, ideas, better ideas is at the heart of the situation. Now, of course, when you put ideas... You, you open up field day for critics. A critic can't do their job unless they have something to criticise. Of course, if you don't do this, then you don't attract critics. But of course, what you're doing is just perpetuating the myth that a revolution and seizing power alone can solve the world's problems. It can't. The problem is, as the bankers do to us every single day, they say, we might be evil, we might be corrupt, we might be greedy, but there is no alternative. And you know, up until now, it's true. There hasn't been a global alternative. There's been local alternatives. There hasn't been a global alternative. So I just say this because the criticism of Eucadia, 
and the criticism of one heaven and the criticism of all the things I share with you is not going to diminish, it's going to increase. It's going to manifestly increase because it's easy to criticise that which you don't read. It's easy to be a lazy, sarcastic critic. And, and, and people do that all the time because once you create something, you give them something to criticise and not read, just throw it away. Work of a madman, work of crazy people. Why change the world? Stuff the rules. Let's start again. All this is, is premised on ignorance of history and ignorance of what's required. Will it distract us? No. We'll keep going. Will it hurt us? No. Because as I've just shown to you, often what will happen is through their own ignorance, their own approach, there will be a message that will be taken in the right way and help improve what we're doing. As you've seen through a state, an executor, a SESTA KV. So we keep going. We keep learning, we keep sharing, and hopefully helping all that need help. So that's the new information, and um, I'm now open to questions and comments and anything you want to say. So fire away. Okay, thank you, Frank. This is Terry here. Uh, let me uh, get some questions here. We have Who Knows Truth on the line. I've just unmuted. Are you there? Yes, I am. Um, I have a few questions. Um, Far away. Okay. Um, now, you spoke about a uh, previous recording about gluing and I'm not jumping to doing all the paperwork without studying first, but there's right. something that that has um, I've wondered about. You said never to uh, never to alter their documents to use the back side of their documents, and yep. that can be done by gluing your your uh, document on the back of theirs. But isn't that wouldn't that be considered altering a document? No. Would you just no? It's your not whole, your whole document over theirs. Over all of their altering, ideas. and it really comes down to what the definition of altering, yeah? Altering is when you uh, place a line uh, through any, anything in the document. Put a line through the document or through a word of the document or underline or any, what appears to be any deliberate alteration of the intention of the document. That's an alteration, yeah? So do you remember there was a big movement a while ago that said to everyone, what you need to do is deface a document and put accepted yes. value. Do you, do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Well, that's altering a document. Okay. Yes. But gluing is not creating an intentional an intentional alteration to the document. So the the front of the document is the obverse, the, the public face. Okay. And the reverse is the private. It's the it's the response. So what you're doing is you're using a natural element of every document. And by the way, even an envelope is this as well. So even a, a piece of post is, applies the same thing. The back side is, the, is your window to respond. Now what they do, and they do, they, you know, they do this on summonses. They'll write on the back so that even if people realize this, they think, oh, I can't put my stuff. And if you had written on the back, you'd actually be altering the document because you'd be altering the form, even though the form on the reverse is your rightful place to respond. So does that make sense, what I'm saying? The gluing doesn't alter a document as the meaning of alteration in law, yeah? Yes, okay. okay. And you just Good. actually place your document completely over the back side of the, the uh, document you're receiving? Of course, of course. And if it's the wrong size, you can blow up theirs. And um, uh, yeah, you don't have to reduce yours, you just blow up theirs. I know people get this issue about original. I, let me just add this in because this happens all the time. People say, oh, you know, send an original of their, I'm talking about their documents. So I send an original, I got a copy, all of that. This original copy stuff from them is, is part, you know, and one of their many hundreds of, of rabbit holes that they send us down. They don't care whether something is a crappy, excuse my French, but a, a, an, an average bad copy of something to a beautiful, you know, documented original. 
when you see a lot of the paperwork that comes from the courts, sometimes